Here's a good example question that tests our understanding of dynamics, especially for changing mass. But very first thing they ask us, what's the principle of conservation of momentum? So you need to remember that the total momentum before anything happens, which is the initial momentum, equals to the final total momentum. Generally, I write in that equation. So the sentence would be that the total momentum of a system of a system is conserved. And by conserve, what I really mean is initial is same as final. There's no change. That's what it means by conserved. Um, but you must mention if the condition, if there are no external forces. Forces. Okay, so this would be an alternative. If you want to say, what other way? Uh, mm, if it's an isolated system, so the condition, alternatively, you could say <coughs> isolated system. So for an isolated system. So one mark here comes from total momentum. The important sign is that all the components add up together, uh, all the objects, total momentum. And the second one is if there's no external forces, the condition, that's the A1 mark. A1 mark generally must follow the M in order to get it. If you didn't get the M, you cannot get the A. <laughs> Sad. Okay, here's the toy car, the main system of today. You have a toy car with a propeller turning and the car is on the ground at first at rest, initially held at rest. When the motor is switched on, the propeller starts to turn. And it blows the air to the left. See this grey column of air? The density of the air is given to us. Okay, why, why would they give us density? Interesting. Let's note down first. Assume the air moves with a constant speed of V in the shape of a uniform cylinder. Ew. So you cannot imagine uh, this propeller is rotating in a circle. So the air that comes out is in the shape of a cylinder, if you can see the drawing here. Assume that the air to the right of the propeller is stationary. So this air on this side is it's not moving. Only the grey part is moving. So what we need to do is we need to show that in the time interval of 2 seconds, the mass of the air that propelled is 0 0.03 kg. Wow, imagine that. So you are blowing air at a certain rate. It's kind of like saying, I have, well, my water, I have a water bottle here. And it's like, maybe this part is coming out of the propeller. So it's like a cylinder of air is coming out of a propeller. And that's going to be how heavy is this cylinder of air. Well, how do we start? Let's, let's see, we need mass. Maybe we need to start with mass. That's right here. Mass equals to... I know, I know, I know. Density equals to mass over volume. That's why they give a, a density, what do you call this, value here, right? So then mass will be density times volume. I already know the density. The density here is going to be 1.3 kilogram per meter cube. But what is the volume? I think that's the real question we need to figure out. How do you find the volume of this amount of air that comes out? Okay, so, so let me just pause here a little bit. Let's let's try to redraw this cylinder down here. Help us to solve and think a little better. So here's a cylinder of air. Imagine it's like a disc, but over time it moves out at a certain speed. What's that speed again? 1.8 meters per second. So imagine a slice moving out or moving, moving out. Okay, what else do we know? Two seconds. So we take two seconds and we watch this column of air get longer and longer. If we could see the air. Radius we know. Ooh, volume. This is the volume of a cylinder. So this will be 4 over 3. Wait a second. Not 4 over 3. That's no, 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 no. Pi R square times the length of this entire cylinder. Let's call this length x. So pi r square x. Then now we need to see what is x. They never give anything about x. No more. However, however, if you imagine a point, uh, let's say this thick point that I draw here. This dot, imagine it's an air, air molecule, is going to be moving at a speed of 
1.8 meters per second. Two seconds later, how far would this particle have moved if we assume this velocity is constant? Ah, how far it travel is how long this cylinder will be. So, what I'm going to do now is take a step back. Like, wait, 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 wait. We need to find how far this distance is. So remember our Stuva equation, S equals to UT plus half AT squared? The air is moving at a constant speed, so there's no acceleration. So this distance, which is x, equals to the velocity times time. And we have all that information here. Ooh, two seconds, everything. Okay, very good. So now we want to find the volume. The volume will be pi r squared x. And if you want to plug in the, the values down there, sure, we can do that. Pi r squared v t. That will tell you that the volume is getting longer and longer as the time goes on. So I'm going to plug everything all inside here. Volume, pi r square v t. Let's keep the density there since we haven't plugged in any values yet. Okay, next step. Now we plug in the values. All right, density 1.3. Pi is pi. R is radius. Where's the radius? Ah, R is on the top. So we've got 0 0.045 square. Velocity, 1.8 meters per second. And how long did we watch this thing rotate? Two seconds. So 2.0. In total, we should get about 0 0.02977. What is this? Mass, right? Kg. So we can round that off. To 2SF, we should get about 0 0.030 kg. And that is what we're supposed to prove at the end. Because this is a show question. Show question means get the value. So there's two marks only for this, unfortunately. The first mark is if you use density equals the mass over volume, that uh, the equation. I see that being used as okay. And then lastly, you substitute all the correct values into your mass find the volume, and then you get 0 0.030. You substitute everything in. So remember, whenever you see a propeller kind of question, think about this air column coming out of the propeller at a certain speed, and you can use this technique to solve that. If you find it hard to imagine, just think about this. You go to the toilet, you sit on the toilet, and you poop. The poop will slowly come out, right? And it's a cylinder. So you can find the volume of the poop if you know how fast it comes out. And what's the radius of your, I guess, your butthole? <laughs> Such a weird imagination. Okay, never mind. We shall move on to the next part. Calculate the increase in momentum of the mass in B1. So we have a change in mass. In two seconds, this much of mass come out. Mm, okay. How does that relate to momentum? Well, you see, momentum uh, is... P equals to mv, right? But we are looking for an increase in momentum. So it's a change in momentum. It goes a change in mass and volume. But vo uh, not volume, velocity. But velocity is not changing. It's just change in mass times velocity. That's constant. Because remember, this column of air is coming out at a constant speed. So the change in mass, we're going to use the value they give us, which is 0 0.030, right? And then the velocity, 1.8. This should give us a value of 0 0.054. Uh, there's many units for this, I guess. We can stick with ns. So this one, we can write 0 0.054 ns. This one is one mark for the final answer. One mark if I see p equals to mv. Oh, you know the basics. Okay, this is for the equation. So if there is a change in momentum, there have to be a force exerted on the mass of air by the propeller. So you have a propeller. Wow, I drew too many blades, did I? This propeller is turning, and when it turns, it pushes or exerts a force on the, on the, uh, the, the air. I'll just call this F. So the air has a change in momentum. What law is that? Newton's second law, there is a force, a net force on an object. It's related to the object's change in momentum. We say dp dt, but delta p delta t is also okay. Lah. 
So the force exerted, we'll just call this F. Change in momentum, we just found the value up there. So 0 0.054 over... How long did this whole process take for this column of air, 0 0.03, to come out? Two, two seconds, right? In two seconds, this amount of mass has come out. M. So we're going to put 2. At the end, we should get 0 0.027 Newton. That's not a lot, but it, it will get the car moving if it needs to. This one is three marks though, I think. So the first mark comes from... Oh, three marks is the whole thing. Never mind. I was like, eh, there's no mark here. <laughs> so one mark comes just for finding force. And then two marks for momentum there. You don't have to resubstitute everything, lah. But here, if you do want to change it, this will be change in mass over change in time times velocity. Except that we already did this step up here, so we don't need to write it again. Okay. So propeller push air. Now we need to explain how Newton's third law applies to the movement of air by the propeller. Nani, what are they asking here? Okay, let's slow down a bit. Just now I say this force. Ah. What is this force? Air push propeller. Force exerted on the air by propeller. Oh, propeller push air. Sorry. The other way around. So this is the force where the propeller pushed the air. We could draw it out. One, two. And I couldn't separate out the air. Ah. There. Push. But that also means, it, how come you turn this, the car will move forward? Means there is also the air pushing the propeller, and this is a force. This is air push propeller. And it will also be the exact same force as the force where the propeller push the air backwards. So propeller push air, air push propeller, same 0 0.027 newtons. That is a newton's third law pair. This force, this force, equal magnitude, opposite direction. So we don't just quote newton's third law. We need to say that the force on air by the propeller, which will be the light blue one on the top, propeller is equal to the force on propeller by the air. That will be the green color one. And one last thing you say is that in opposite direction. So the force is equal and both forces are in opposite direction. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking for is the equal magnitude. I guess you could say equal, sure, let's add that in. Equal magnitude, this is the M1 mark. And also these two forces are in opposite direction. That's the last A1 mark. So really we're referring to these two forces. I push you, you push me. That's how the car moves forward, by pushing air back. And there's a momentum there. All right. Now the last part, if you haven't tried this one yet, I, I, I encourage you to pause the video now. Quickly try it before I discuss it and then come and see where you got stuck and how to move forward from there. So now you say the total mass of the car is 0 0.2 kg. The brakes of the car release and the car starts to move. So imagine this car by pushing air backwards, thanks to the propeller. How to draw? Ah. There it looks... <laughs> the air is being pushed backwards. Woo! And... Because the air is being pushed backwards, the air pushes the propeller forward. So there's a propulsion force that allows this car to move. And it moves with certain acceleration, 0 0.05. Determine the initial frictional force acting on the car. So there's a forward force that I just draw in orange, thanks to the propeller. But there's also perhaps due to the, the tires or some other drag force, I don't know. There is a frictional force. So when you are involved with forces and acceleration, there is one equation 
that we need to use and that is Newton's second law. Well, the version of it where you have constant mass times an acceleration, which is a changing velocity. So when you look at net force, you need to think of what are the forces acting on the car? There's two. Firstly, there is a propulsion force by the propeller. How much is that? Well, let's just, let's just label this. So this will be force due to the propeller pushing you forward. But there's also an opposing force in the opposite direction. So if I say the one due to the propeller is going to be positive, the one going backwards will be negative. So you need to add a negative force that is fighting against you. That is the friction. And these two equals to the mass of the car times the acceleration. So let's plug in the values. I think this one was 0 0.027, I think. Wait, uh, let me go and check real quick. 0 0.027, yep, that's correct. Okay, 0 0.027 minus, let's just call this F, small f, for friction. And then mass times acceleration. So this would be 0 0.2 kg. This is the mass of the car, by the way. Times the acceleration, which is 0 0.075. That's how fast this car is accelerating in the direction to the right. So we give it a positive. Sure, since everything we define to the right is positive, right? We might as well stick with that positive, positive. Anything that points to the left is negative. So with this, we should get a value of F equals to... One moment, ah, calculator time. 0 0.2 times 0 0.075 minus 0 0.027. That would be oh, 0 0.012 Newton. So this is going to be 0 0.012. I guess if you want to write in standard form, also can. That means this would be 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, so the marks come from, firstly, the final answer. And then, hmm, this one I am going to look for your understanding of Newton's second law. So could it be this step? Or it could also be that step. But this one is the use of uh, Newton's second law, substituting in the correct values and finding the final answer. So remember, be careful uh, when you have net force equals to ma. You need to think about all the forces acting on the object. In this case, there's two forces. You got to write the both forces in to find the acceleration of the object. Okay, so that's all for this video. A nice summary of a propeller physics. There's quite a few more that are similar, so go try them out in the examples list. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.